do you even start with that? Uh, the image that's been just really captivating me this whole week uh, when we had our dedication uh, day and preparation leading up to it was remembering how a church is dedicated and how this church was dedicated. And the centerpiece of that is the altar. The altar is just a plain table or it's just marble or wood until they light fire on it. And then after they light fire on it and incense and they burn it on the altar, then they anoint it with chrism and then it is dressed. And I just, that, that image, right, before it can receive the Lord, it must be set on fire. And that, and then, because the church is just a building, it's before it's consecrated, it's just a, a house, it's just a frame and walls and floor and ceiling. But then the bishop comes and he says mass for the first time in that place on that altar that just had fire lit on it. And then the heavenly fire descends from above. And then what is left over is now put into the tabernacle and the light is lit the sanctuary light, Jesus is now home and is going to dwell there forever. And it becomes a holy place that whoever comes in will meet the Lord. And as Solomon, when he prayed for the dedication of the old temple, God spoke to him after the dedication sacrifice. He said, if my people will repent with all their hearts and come into this house, I will give them whatever they ask for. Friends, do you see why the church is so important? It's the place where God, who lives in the heavens, who is outside of time, has chosen to live in time here in a location where you can go to meet the invisible, almighty, all-powerful God. Isn't that amazing? And since 1965, that has been the case with this building. That God has lived here continuously since 1965 bodily he of course is everywhere in the creation by his spirit but here he lives in the same way that he lives in heaven the way he reigns on his throne in heaven he reigns here in this place in this holy house and then the kicker happens today in the gospel because jesus says did you hear it On the day when you see me, which is going to happen after the resurrection, you will realize I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Meaning... That what we do in this church is meant to be a reflection, not just of this building, but of your life. That God wants to live in you permanently and that light to always be burning because he always lives in you. But for that to happen, what has to happen first? Sanctify the Lord in your hearts because the heart is your altar where you give worship to God. So what does that mean? What has to happen to your heart before it can receive Jesus? It has to be lit on fire! It must be lit on fire. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It is meant to light you up. Some people are like, Father's a little too much. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because friends, if we really understood who it is who's a few feet away from me, I would die. I would die. It's the creator of the universe. I can't get excited enough about it. It's impossible. The fire that has been burning in my heart since I met the Lord when I was 16 years old, that fire has only burned more. And I apologize if it just, I, I can't contain it. But friends, I have one desire in my life and that you know him because he has changed my life. And I know he's changed a lot of your lives. But listen to this, St. Peter, he tells us this, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you a reason for your hope. This has guided my life ever since I was a child, but what I didn't think about until recently is saying that presumes you have hope inside of you to have a, 
explanation for. Many Catholics have lived their life without that altar ever being lit on fire. And it's really heroic that they've persevered, but I can't live without that fire, right? I have a desire to tell everyone I know about this Jesus and I want them to come. I want them to see him. I want them to receive him. I want them to be Catholic. It's the greatest thing in the world. And some people have the attitude, I don't know if I would offend them. I don't want to share that. Like, are you kidding me? They're dying alone and despairing and they won't have eternal life with God unless you share it with them because it's very few people who obey the commandments. Now, I've met some people who, through light of natural reason, it's really remarkable, they obey the commandments, even though they, they're not Christian. That's rare. It almost never happens. Because, as the Second Vatican Council teaches us, because our intellects are darkened, very often we worship the creature rather than the creator. So without the light of the gospel, it's very unlikely that someone is gonna live a Christian life, amen? Because if you hardly live a Christian life with the light of revelation, what about someone who lives in darkness? It's crazy, right? Somebody can see that it's a, it's a good thing to do, maybe. Maybe this is an important thing to live, but, but to do it with passion, with zeal, all day, every day, unlikely, unless that heart is lit on fire, friends. So we need to pray for that fire, because that's what happened in the Acts of the Apostles, Right? Philip, the deacon, he's going to Samaria and he's preaching the gospel and he's lighting them up. How's he lighting them up? He's healing the sick. He's expelling demons, right? Why do we do nights of hope and healing? It's to light people up. Light them up. It's the way the apostles worked. It's the way the gospel was proclaimed to the nations. Why would they listen to these fishermen? Unless they had power. Unless if the dead were raised. Unless if the sick were healed. Unless they did the exact same things as Jesus. Because they said, the spirit who raised Christ from the dead lives in me. And they say, prove it. In the name of Jesus, stand up. Whoa! <laughs> right? Every single day I see this happening now here at St. Ellis. And it's not an accident because God is trying to light us up. Because we're dead, church. We've been dead for far too long, thinking that being a Catholic just means that you have a nice soup supper or a soup kitchen or you do nice things for people sometimes and you're polite and you don't swear too much. That's not being a Catholic. Or some people, they swear like a sailor. And the, you know, right? That's, it's saying, that's not what being a Catholic is. Being a Catholic is being lit up by the love of God and letting it absolutely decide everything in your life, where you go, where you don't go, who you talk to, who you don't talk to, what you spend your time on, it will determine why you get up in the morning. It will determine everything. Because friends, once you consecrate this house to the Lord, we're not gonna have a dance party in here, right? It's not gonna become a nightclub, right? But yet, don't we do that to our bodies that have been consecrated in baptism and we take them to places that can't even be named, to shows that should never be watched, to concerts that should never be attended. We do things to our body that are unspeakable. And you see the devil's tactic here is he's trying to get children to hate their own bodies and destroy the temple that God made. You know what the Lord says? Whoever destroys that temple, God will destroy that person. And anyone who promotes these things will have a lot to pay for and a lot to answer for. We need to pray for them. That's what Our Lady of Fatima today is her feast day. What she said, pray and do penance for sinners because so many people are going to hell because there is no one to pray for them. So many people don't even think of God. They hate him. And worse yet, some people hate him and spit upon him. Pray for them because they don't know what they're doing. If they did for one second, they would recoil in horror because they're caught in darkness. And we need to pray that the light of Jesus would break through to them because we love them. We don't hate anyone. It's so hard, right? When we see people on TV who are doing horrible things in the name of the church or in the name of being Catholic, right? Horrible things, names cannot even be named here, right? But the fact is, you know who they are who say I'm Catholic and we do all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus, that abortion is good, that it's okay to mutilate children, that it's okay to do all these things and I'm a good Catholic too. Shocking, horrendous, but hey, people have always spat on the Lord who are part of his number. Don't you be one of them. Pray for them because if your heart is lit on fire, you cannot be anything other. You cannot be any different. You can't go back to the way you were. Friends, some of you are preparing for confirmation. Some of you received the gift of confirmation. We see very clearly here 
the ordinary means of receiving the Holy Spirit because he's preaching the gospel to them. They're being healed, they're being baptized, but the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. So what do they do? They send the bishops. They send John and Peter and they lay hands on them and they then receive the Spirit in confirmation. Now we see very clear there's several instances in the Acts of the Apostles where it happens out of order, right? Because it's a confusing time. God, and this also shows us that the Holy Spirit can operate sovereignly. I've met people who've never received the sacrament of confirmation who definitely have received the Holy Spirit, yes? Because God is not limited by the sacraments. However, he chooses to use them as the ordinary means of grace. So if you know that it's there, why wouldn't you want to receive it, right? But God, of course, is very merciful and he wants everyone to be saved. So he reaches out in as many ways as possible to bring people to himself because the Holy Spirit is the one who lights us on fire. And this is the one thing when we're looking, uh, anyone who tries to hire people for jobs, who's been trying to do that before, okay? Is it hard to find a zealous candidate? You might be able to teach people job skills, but if somebody's lazy, you can't fix it, right? <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that true? Anyone who's ever hired somebody before, like you hire somebody who is lazy, you can't fix that because you can't teach people fire. Fire just happens to you. You are either lit on fire or you are not. What, is, what does the prophet say? Zeal for your house consumes me, O Lord. And maybe you're not wired like I am where you don't eat coffee. But, <laughs> but the fact is, friends, zeal doesn't have to look like it looks like in me, right? You can be very quietly zealous. I've met people who are very calm and peaceful. Maybe that's a better way of doing it because I turn off some people. So you'll be able to reach them when I can't, right? But the fact is, you need to be passionate, unwavering, unyielding, and clear that God is first in my life. And I don't put any other incense on the altar of my heart. I don't worship any other God, not my phone, not my job, not my spouse, not anything else but the Lord Jesus. Because this heart has been consecrated to offer the sacrifice of my life to the Father. And that's Christianity. Not this sort of milk toast thing we hear about. It's your life. Or else it isn't. And then go watch football, I guess. But why? When you know who it is who's here, the only response is saying, take everything, Lord. It's worth it. You've given me everything. I want to give back my life in kind. May each one of you set on fire. We're coming up on the novena to Pentecost this Thursday. I invite all of you to pray it. I invite all of you to really just ask, come Holy Spirit, because we need a new Pentecost. God has been doing a Pentecost in little pockets, and some of you have received it. But I want everybody to be a spirit-filled evangelist, because each one of you needs to be able to explain to your friends, because I'll never meet them. They'll never talk to Father, but they'll talk to you. And they need to see in you that there's a fire burning. It might be a quiet fire, but it's a fire because our God is a consuming fire. And if he lives in you, you cannot be unburned by it. Come Holy Spirit.